Hi there, Jane Crowfoot here with a few quick tips to show you how to work neatly in the round. These are a couple of techniques that I use all the time. Um, you might like them, you might not, but um, see what you think. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to get a neat first round when you're working in the round. All these techniques are for working in the round. So if you're doing a pattern where you need to make a chain to begin with and then you're going to join that chain to make a slip stitch when you join the slip stitch it doesn't matter whether you go one side of the chain or the other but the key thing is at that point where I've just put my hook in to make my slip stitch I move the tail of the yarn there over the hook to the back before I do my slip stitch and what that does is it puts your slip knot that you started the round with to the back of the work so that when you do that first round when you're filling up that ring you can't see the slip knot at the back so I'm going to show you that again we always start more or less always when we're working at the very beginning with a slip knot on the hook and it's this slip knot that can show in your work so you do your chain I'm going to do five three, four, five. I'm then going to join it, so I'm putting my hook in to join, but before I actually do the slip knot, slip stitch, sorry, I pull the tail over to the back of the work, over to the right hand side, and then do the slip knot. You can feel it tighten as you do that, and that means that the slip knot is now at the back of my work. So now I'm going to fill this ring up, so I've done one chain to get me to the height of the round, and then I'm going to fill that ring up with as many stitches as will fill it. It should be about 10 stitches. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is the last one. This is my tenth one. And on the last one, I do just go over the tail as well. So there's the tail you can see there. I'll just bring that over to the right. And on the last one, I just go over that one as well and then do my slip stitch to join. There we go. So when you look at my ring, you should see it's really nice. The center, the center is nicely round. You can't see my slip stitch that was made at the beginning. OK, now imagine you're working something that the next color, the next round is going to be a different color. What you should do to change colour is actually do your colour change on the slip stitch. So I'm going to show you that. I've just got up to the point where I'm going to do my slip stitch. Here's the yarn ready. So I'm going to draw that through to do the slip stitch and the one chain ready. Now the problem with that, if you change colour like that, is that if you're doing lots of rounds, say every round is a different colour, you will always get the changeover in colour at the same point. So you almost get like a scar running through your work because it always leaves behind a little bit of yarn from the last round. So what I would actually do if I was changing colour here, I would do my slip stitch using this minty green. and completely finished. So I'm going to cut my yarn at this point, cut that off, leaving myself a yarn tail. So I'm cutting that off and then I don't do another chain either. That's something I don't do as well. Some people do another chain here to fasten off but I don't do that. I just gently pull my hook so that that comes out. It won't go anywhere. And then from behind into that same slip stitch I pull my yarn through to the back of the work and that gives me a really nice neat finish on that ring. So when I join in my next round which is going to be this yellow, bright yellow colour, I would then work out where my tail is. So my tail end is, it's that one actually, that's my 6 o'clock if I'm looking at my piece and this is my 12 o'clock over here so I'm going to join away from where I've finished there and I'm going to use double crochet so I'm going to catch my yarn it's 
get that out of the way. Get the scissors out of the way as well. So I've got my yarn ready. I don't need to do a knot or anything. I'm just going to hold that at the back and draw it through my crochet and do one chain. Okay, so that just joins the yarn in, gets me ready. So now on this next round, I'm going to do two stitches into every stitch from the previous round. So I'm just going to do one into that same stitch. And then when I look at that, it actually almost looks like two because I've got the chain there at the beginning plus one clear stitch. And it's always bugged me that that looks like two stitches at that point. So what I do at that point is I actually get hold of half of that chain. There, it's that one and pull that yarn end to the front of the work and it will come out and sit at the back and that then looks far more like one stitch. So I'm doing two into every stitch all the way around and I'm going to have 20 stitches at the end of this but I want to show you what happens when I get to the slip stitch that was made on the previous round. I've got one more clear stitch here that I can see and then I'm reaching my kind of messy bit now. I can see that I'm at the point where the slip stitch was made on the previous round. So what I tend to do at this point is count back from here to see how many clear stitches I've got. So I've used one, two, three, four, five. So in theory I've got five stitches left. So I can see one, two, three, four, really nice and clearly. So it's at this point in here between my thumbs that I've got to make a decision what stitch to use. And I tend to actually use the slip stitch itself. So I'm going to use the hook part of my hook to find that slip stitch, open it right up, it might be a bit tight, open it right up and do my two into there. And then although it looks like a bit of a jump away, I'm going to go past the slip stitch, past the, actually that's the stitch behind, it's the one that the slip stitch was worked into, and jump along to the next one. And if I look at that on the hook, you'll see that although it looked like a long way away, that actually puts those stitches back next door to each other. So then I'm going to do two into every stitch, one, two, one, two, and one, and two. And then I'm just going to do my slip stitch at the end. Again, sort of using the hook part of my hook to find that first stitch and do my slip stitch. So that's my second round, all done. So the final thing I'm going to show you is actually if I was joining using treble crochet instead of double crochet so I'm just going to pull that out again look don't do that extra chain and I'm just going to pull that yarn through to the back I'm going to show you how to join using treble crochet but the first thing I'm going to do is just sew my ends in I'm going to do that off camera because I can't stand it when I've got lots of ends so I'm just quickly going to do that off camera then I'm going to show you what to do with treble crochet so I'm going to join in this lilac, this lovely lilac colour now. I'm going to show you two ways to join in as if you're going to work treble crochet which is a longer post stitch. So I've sewn my ends in but I've just left my last one there so I can gauge where the other side of my work is. And I'm going to first show, sorry, first show you how to join with three chains. So if you're going to join into that stitch the first thing you're going to do is draw your yarn through and make one chain and that's the same join as you saw when I did the double crochet join only this time we don't want to lose that yarn that's that becomes part of the first stitch if we over pull at this point what tends to happen is the whole thing will come out through the stitch so what I'm going to do instead is just make sure that I've held the end of the yarn as I do that chain and then to anchor the tail in I pick up that tail there that was part of that stitch place it over the working yarn there it doesn't matter which way you do it it can go that way round or that way round but did you see I've placed that tail there it is there it was there and I've placed it over my working yarn like that before I then do my next chain 
and that's caught the yarn in. That won't pull now. Can you see it's caught it into the chain? So then I do my third chain and I'm ready to start my treble crochet stitches. Okay, and you can't see that that's going to come undone and you can't really see that tail. Once you've filled up the ring, you can't really see that tail at the end. So that's what I do if I'm joining using three chain. The other type of join you could do if you wanted to is a standing treble. It's not something I do in my patterns because if I ask people to start with a standing treble, they wouldn't, not everyone would know what I meant. So it's something I don't use in my patterns, but if you want to use it, it's quite a good little tip. So I'm going to put that down for a second. The first thing I'm going to do is put a slip knot onto my hook. Now you find this is a little bit tricky because you have to sort of hold the yarn around the hook and hold your bit of crochet. So I've got a slip knot on my hook and I've put the yarn around the hook once and I'm then going to pick up my piece of crochet and hold it there and go through my chosen stitch. So can you see that I've got a slip knot, yarn around the hook and then through the stitch. I catch through and this now is just like a treble. I've got three loops on my hook. I can go through the first one and two like that and then the second two. And the slip knot, as you can see, has put itself at the top of the work. So that's another really neat little tip for working in the round. It looks like a true treble. So my final tip is one you can use on your last round when you're working your very last stitch. What I do is I don't do a slip stitch on that final stitch. I actually cut my yarn at that point before I've done the slip stitch. You can see I've reached the standing treble at the beginning of that round. So I'm going to cut my yarn and just gently draw that yarn loop through that stitch like that. Being careful not to over pull it. I'm then going to thread that whoops, onto a big sewing needle like that and then I'm going to mimic the appearance of a treble crochet at the chain at the top. So I'm going to put my yarn into there and into the other side there. Can you see that? So that's coming out of that one, around that one, like that. And then it goes back in to that one to create a nice, neat chain. Okay, so I pull my needle out. And when you look at that, actually my slip knot's just pulled that through there. So just get rid of the slip knot. The slip knot needs to be sewn in as well. Um, but then when you look at that, you've got a really nice, neat join without a little bit that sticks up. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed those little tips. Um, I think working in that way makes a, a ring much easier, much more neat. And um, I hope there's a few things in there that you might adopt for your own crochet. Thank you for watching.